Fit a nut into each of the four hexagonal recesses in the black shaft fixing bases. Position the fixing bases so that the nuts are above the corresponding holes in the metal Y gantry bottom cover. Insert four bolts through the underside of the gantry cover and into the nuts. Tighten the bolts with a Phillips type crosshead screwdriver. Take the Y gantry bottom cover with the large oval hole at the right. Insert one end of the metal Y shaft into the socket in the black fixing base nearest to you. Fit two nuts into the hexagonal recesses in the third shaft fixing base. Slip the fixing base over the free end of the Y shaft so that its nuts are above the corresponding holes in the Y gantry bottom. Insert two bolts through the underside of the gantry cover and into the nuts. Tighten the bolts with a Phillips type crosshead screwdriver. Fit the fourth shaft fixing base with two nuts in the position shown. Fix with the remaining two bolts. With the large oval hole in the metal gantry cover at the right, unscrew the right hand fixing base from the gantry cover, slip it off the Y shaft and set the fixing base bolts and nuts to one side. Take the Y-axis linear bearing block with the four brass threaded bolt sockets positioned on the left and facing upwards. Slide the bearing block onto the Y-shaft. Slide the plastic shaft fixing base back onto the end of the metal shaft. Reattach the fixing base to the gantry cover with the bolts and nuts that you set aside. Undo the two bolts and nuts to release the fourth shaft fixing base from the Y gantry bottom cover, then put these aside. Slide the second Y shaft through the Y axis linear bearing block and into the socket in the second shaft fixing base. Refit the fourth shaft fixing base to the end of the Y shaft. Secure the fixing base to the Y gantry bottom cover with the two nuts and bolts. Slide the Y-axis linear bearing block along the two Y-shafts. If it won't slide all the way, slacken off the shaft fixing bases.
When you are sure that the linear bearing block runs smoothly, fully tighten all four nuts in the two shaft fixing bases. Then recheck that the linear bearing block slides smoothly. Take the Y axis belt holder and, with the two prongs pointing downwards, position its fixing hole over the centre brass threaded socket in the Y axis linear bearing block. Fix the belt holder with one bolt. Take the two bearings and note that each one has a wide belt retaining lip on one side. Slide one bearing onto the spindle of the bearing fixing base so that the belt retaining lip is at the bottom. Then slide the second bearing onto the spindle so that the belt retaining lip is at the top. Take the E-clip and grip it with a pair of long nose pliers. Push the E-clip across the top of the upper bearing and firmly around the spindle of the bearing fixing base so that both bearings are retained on the spindle. Align the two threaded holes in the bearing fixing base over the two holes in the Y gantry bottom cover between the two shaft fixing bases. Ensure that the vertical shaft carrying the two bearings is positioned closest to the end of the Y gantry bottom cover. Fix the bearing fixing base firmly with two bolts from beneath the bottom cover. Feed one end of the timing belt beneath the Y-axis linear bearing block and slip it over the pair of bearings on the bearing fixing base, ensuring that the teeth of the belt are on the inside. Now slide the belt up into the groove jaws of the Y-axis belt holder you may need to slacken the bolt that fixes the belt holder. When the belt is horizontal, tighten the bolt to grip the Y-axis belt holder. Align the limit switch between the two jaws on the limit switch holder with the switch toggle roller to the left. Press the switch firmly down into the jaws and onto the two support pins. Press the red and black wires down through the jaws at the sides of the holder. Align the limit switch holder with the ends of the two shaft fixing bases so that the toggle roller faces inwards. Fix the holder to the Y gantry bottom cover with two bolts. Keep the motor tester board in its protective box. The motor driver board will be fitted later. Do not connect the AC power adapter yet. Fix a grub screw loosely into the side of the timing belt gear using a 1.5mm Allen key. Slide the timing belt gear onto the spindle of the motor, ensuring that the teeth are farthest from the motor. Align the grub screw with the flat side of the spindle and tighten it fully.
fit the motor to the underside of the Y gantry bottom cover so that the timing belt gear protrudes through the large hole and is positioned beside the limit switch. Wrap the tooth timing belt around the teeth of the timing belt gear. Fix the motor with four M3 and 5.5mm bolts. Ensure that the wires from the limit switch are not wrapped around or touching the motor spindle or timing belt gear. Check that the timing belt is fitted correctly by gently sliding the linear bearing block along the two Y shafts. The bearing block should slide smoothly and the timing belt should rotate the gear on the motor shaft. If the movement is not smooth, slacken the four motor bolts, pull the motor to the right to tension the belt and then re-tighten the bolts. You may also need to adjust the fit of the Y axis belt holder by loosening its bolt Align its grip on the belt and then retighten the bolt. Remove the lid from the temporary protective box which encloses the motor tester board. Carefully push the pins on the underside of the motor driver board into the two rows of sockets on the motor tester board. Ensure that the row of seven pins with one missing pin and the row of eight pins fit into the corresponding arrays of seven and eight sockets. Then replace the lid of the box. Push the plug at the end of the red and black wires from the limit switch into the two pin socket J5 on the motor tester board, passing the plug through the hole in the protective box. Push the plug on the end of the red, blue, green and black wires from the Y axis motor into the four pin socket J9. Push the plug on the end of the wire from the AC power adapter into the socket J1 at the side of the motor tester board. Plug the AC power adapter into a mains power supply and switch on the supply. Slide the switch S2 at the side of the motor tester board to the on position. Press the push button S1 on the motor tester board to move the linear bearing block forwards. Release the button when the bearing block reaches the end of the shafts. Press the push button S3 to move the linear bearing block backward. When you have finished this test, slide switch S2 to the off position. Disconnect the AC power adapter from the motor tester board. Fit the Y-axis cover over the Y-axis assembly so that the wires from the limit switch are within the large slot at the side of the cover and are not trapped between the two panels. Fix the Y-axis cover to the Y-gantry bottom cover with three bolts in the position shown. Note that the fourth bolt will be fitted at a later stage.
Fit the y-axis bracket across the y-axis gantry bottom. Ensure that the crossbar of the bracket is closest to the motor. Align the four holes in the ribbed mounting plate with the corresponding four holes in the gantry bottom. Then fix the bracket firmly with four bolts. The stage one assembly is now complete.